So, I'm quite late to this series, but I recently watched Steins Gate. Well, I'm currently still watching Steins Gate Zero, but as far as the original series, I've seen it all. And man, I understand why this series has so much hype. The thing about Steins Gate, though, is you really have to give it a chance first, because the pacing is both slow yet immaculate at the same time. By that, I mean it feels like the true series doesn't even start till around episode 12. But before I get into all that, I want to talk about the first 11 episodes. The show starts off in an incredibly confusing situation that I'm not even going to try to attempt to explain. Chances are, if you're watching this, you've seen Steins Gate anyway, and if not, then go watch it now. Anyhow, after the first episode, things become a bit easier to understand, even though there is little to no explanation to some of the events from the first episode. And that's kind of the point. You're supposed to watch it and be hopelessly lost at first. And that is one of my favorite things in anime, when you're confused and you, the viewer, along with the characters, have to unravel the mysteries of their world. If you don't know, the basic premise is a group of people accidentally built a time machine that allows them to send messages to the past. But an organization is on their tails trying to create a time machine. Another thing I love a lot is the many great characters within their city who all also have mysteries of their own to uncover. It kind of reminds me of anime like Clonad, which one of the other main similarities from those two series is that they both originated from visual novels. And in some aspects, they both have similar vibes, which I think is a good thing. Anyways, the first 11 episodes really just sprinkle in the important details for later while focusing on a more calm path with many unique character introductions. Speaking of unique, the main character of Steins Gate, Okabe, is a very unique main character, as he's built up the Chinibio state of an evil mad scientist, which honestly just makes him a really enjoyable character to watch. But there's a lot more to him than that. But before I go into all that, I'll mention the importance of episode 12. Essentially, that's when the real series starts. In that episode, Myri, one of the main cast members and childhood friend of Okabe, gets shot by the government organization CERN. At this point in the series, the main characters have upgraded their time machine, now allowing Okabe to jump back in time and try to save Myri. And that's where the fantastic scenes of Steinscape begin to shine. And we get to see amazing character development from Okabe as well. For instance, it's revealed that Okabe really only adapted his Chinibio persona to cheer up Myri after her grandmother's passing. But now he's stuck time traveling time, time, and again, failing to save her. Seeing her die over and over, he starts to lose himself. This show really hits you in the feels and mix that with a good set of characters, with good animation and good soundtrack, it makes one amazing anime. This anime really used time travel in incredible ways to make all the characters more likable and the love story between Okabe and Kurisu more interesting. At the end of the day, Steins Gate is an amazing story a cut above a lot of other series, a story about never giving up to save those you love, a story about how everything changes but to always test the impossible. Steins Gate is one of the series where at the end of every episode, episode, I found myself excited to watch the next. I'll admit, I almost dropped it at first, but in the end, I'm really glad I stuck with Steinsgate.